Happy Halloween. Is it Halloween? It's the 31 days of Halloween. It's the 31 days of Halloween. Yes. It's all about scary movies. You're a goddamn genius. That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. Have you ever went back and looked at our episodes and see how many of our shows are about horror films? No. What, what would you predict? 40%. I would think you're probably Well, right. I think our percentage of videos would skew because of how many, because there are 31 shorts that we release. Yeah. So that would skew it. But if you take just the other videos and you take the 31 days of Halloween out of it, it's probably like 30%. Yeah. Well, I really like October and I really like talking about horror films. I'm Dr. Paul, by the way. I am Diet Dr. Paul. And together we are... If you liked the scariest horror movies ever made, we're sure you liked the scariest horror movies made part two. <laughs> well, guess what? If if there were nothing, we're, we're, we're going to be just like Hollywood here and we're going to go right back to the well. And for part three. Trifecta, baby. And as long as two people watch this one, we're going to come next week with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. <laughs> Well, the thing is, is there's so many really, really good horror movies. And and um, and that was certainly the case. It's hard to narrow it down. I don't know if it was for, for you. Well, now that we've gotten all the surface level stuff out of the way, it's all about really figuring out what is the scariest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what makes a movie scary. There's different types of scary to, to, to worry about. You know, there's the jump scare. There, I started listing different types of scares and some of these are very similar but like there's the, the impending doom there's suspense there's the fight or flight of the jump scare there's the terror in your face then there's sort of the sorrow and there's the grief aspect so there's different types of fear and scare and it's all about which ones work for you so i try to come up with some a, a good range of different ones here yeah well good well this is again the scariest movies sometimes scary though is you've said you were you know i've said before that in order for a horror movie it needs to be scary funny or, or gory or gory and um that sort of played out in in mine as 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 well mm -hmm. so you want uh, you want me to get started you can i started last if time. you're new to this we talk about movies horror movies pop culture model building superheroes and and real film like you know high quality film the oscars you shut up! I'm so f***ing scared right now, you shut up! Um, and Father Son, if you hadn't figured it out. I think that's what's called mansplaining. <laughs> and um, we drop a new episode every single week. We've got like 281 episodes, I think, last time I, mm -hmm. I, I checked. Um, this is going to be what we call the seven. And it is, I pick my seven, he picks his seven. I have no idea what he's going to say. He doesn't know what I'm gonna say. Oh sh! What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Sometimes we get a little bit of overlap on on that. I'm not expecting we're gonna see a whole lot uh, this go around. Mm -hmm. But my number seven, Cabin in the Woods, 2012. It's got a Rotten Tomatoes 90, 92. Kids head off, you know, for a weekend in a cabin. And uh, but it turns out to be somewhat of a science experiment if you haven't if you haven't seen it. It's very postmodern in the same way that Scream was postmodern. Scream identified various themes in horror horror tropes, and then they played it. They they brought it to the you know out in the front. They they peeled back the it's like the the fourth wall. They do that as well in Cabin in the in in the Woods. It's directed by Drew Goddard, who was Oscar nominated for the script on uh, The Martian. I don't know if you knew that. Um, and it's directed. Uh, he also directed uh, uh, Bad Times at the El uh, Royale, which mm -hmm. I thought was a was a great film. It has Chris uh, Hemsworth in it and Kristen Connolly. This is just a surprising movie. It's not when you sit down and start watching it, you don't realize what it is. And then, you know, you get into it and you find us like, okay, now I get it. 
It's just surprising. And I love things that are unique and different that you've never seen before. And I can't think of another movie at all that's like Cabin in the, the Woods. It's rewatchable over and over and over again. Just a great flick. I'm a big fan of that movie. I, I like that. That's a perfect movie for like a horror movie marathon or a 31 Days of Halloween. Um, it's hard to believe that it's been out that long. When you said, was it 2012? Yeah. Jeez, man. But yeah, it's super surprising. Does the whole tropes thing and, and leans into it. Big fan of that movie. Yeah. I like it. Okay. It's almost as good as my number seven, but not quite. 2001. And now you saw this and probably I'm going to go ahead and guess what he says. He saw this one time. It is 2001's Suicide Club. J-horror at its finest. Do you remember that one? Not I the, saw it once. The 54 girls <laughs> that jump on the train tracks. This is just, this is, and I'm not just saying this to be, you know, tongue in cheek. It is J-horror at its finest. This movie will get under your skin in part because of the use, uh, part in part because of how it, it really connects to today with social media and like just that sort of main character syndrome bleeding through people's heads. But in essence, it's about Japan. And all of a sudden, 54 girls just jump on these train tracks and kill themselves. And it's almost like the idea of suicide becomes contagious or so. But it's the use of this incredible overt gore and the music. It is like pop music that somehow bleeds into the most insane horror soundtracks. But the, the sound is one of the reasons why it's so effective. It just made my stomach turn. And it's from 2001, but it's J-horror. So it's always going to look a little bit more fake, even though they lean into it. So I don't know. There's just something about it. It's unnerving to its core and had to be included on this list. I think there's a generational difference between the two of us. And yes, I appreciate we have we've talked ad nauseum on this show about foreign films uh, and foreign horror films. And I think J-horror... Korean horror, Chinese horror, Japanese horror, um, that that was really, I think that it resonated a whole lot more with your generation than it did mine. Um, and it certainly, that with that, that film, I felt like it was almost like if you go to a buffet and you eat too much, at that period of time, I remember I've seen so much J-horror, it's like I need something different. Mm -hmm. And I know that's kind of silly to say because if I was in Japan, all I would be watching would be Japanese films, yeah. kind of kind of stuff. But it's you 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 know there's a sensibility sometimes in Japanese uh, uh, films or Chinese films. It's a little bit different from Western uh, films, and maybe I'm just not as accustomed to it. But I saw it one time, um, and and it didn't have the same impact on me. But I think the people that are watching our our are listening to our show right now probably resonates a whole lot and they'll think, yeah, I remember how good that really was. That needs to be on a list. It's a good like double feature with the movie called Pulse that we talked about last year, which was on my scariest movies ever made list. Might've been on the second one. It's second. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's about, you know, the internet and how it's going to change things and the fears that it brings in. It's got a nice little theme to it, but good film. Yeah. Oh, good job. Number six for me, which you might be surprised, Evil Dead Rise 2023. Um, Rotten really? Tomato, 80, 84, <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, directed by Lee Cronin, um, who has two more horror films in the works. Um, you know, you you when you hit a home run, then they start throwing money at you and give you a little bit more freedom. And so there's mm -hmm. no details on what those are going to look like. Um, Evil Dead Rise, I'm not a big fan of reboots and sequels at all. Um, and so I went into this with a little bit of, of fear and trepidation. And um, it was different enough and unique enough from the original Evil Dead without it seem like a mimic. It pays homage to, to that fantastic set design, makeup effect is amazing, the, the camera work and editing. And, and what I, rem I remember is if you've ever traveled and you spent much time in a hotel room and somebody knocks at your door and you look through the little keyhole, I don't care the time of the day. It's always creepy, you know, to look through that the and, fish and see, thing. yes, it is. And they play this up in this, in this thing so much um, that really evokes this really kind of creepy, creepy thing. And it's also, you know, in Night of the Living Dead, the, 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 I think the, the scariest scene in Night of the Living Dead is in the basement when uh, uh, Kira Shurn, I think is her name, with a little girl, mm -hmm. and she stabs the mother with a trowel. Mm -hmm. There's something about family 
And when, when a zombie or a demon or whatever is a family member and kills their family or preys on their family, it's just terrifying. Mm -hmm. And they really play that up. That's something that the original. That's Evil all Dead this series, is. Basically. Yes. It didn't have it. But uh, I, I don't know that I liked it as much when we first saw it. I think you'd be surprised it's on my list. Very. But it really sort of grows on you a, a, a little bit. And, and I think, yeah. I, I, I like it a lot more than when I think about, like if I were to just throw a number rating out, it, it'd be a lot lower than I think if I really thought about the movie. Because it is kind of a good movie and it's is very disturbing and gory and over the top, but it does have this visceral quality to it. Yeah. And I, I would agree with everything you just said. Good stuff. All right, number six. This is the one that I think you should see if you've not seen it. And I don't know how I didn't see this thing. I'm not, not sure what I was smoking, what made me miss this, but it's from 2020 and it's called The Night House. 88% um, on Rotten Tomatoes, 6.4 out of IMDb, directed by David Bruckner, starring Rebecca Hall, uh, Sarah Goldberg, and Evan Junkite. But it is about this woman who uh, her husband kills himself. With a gun, that's how it starts the trailer. Oh, my husband shot himself with a gun I didn't know he had. And it's kind of like picks up with post-funeral in her life. And the great thing about it is they never let the viewer 100% know what's happening. But it's not like they're leaving you in the dark on purpose. It's this wonderful thing where throughout this film, they're always letting you know a little bit more information. And so you're constantly like on the edge of your seat, like what's happening? And and the tension is driven through this thing. It's very, um, it reminded me a lot of Hereditary in some respects, but I called it uh, Coraline meets Sinister, but done the right way. If anybody watched the film Sinister and said, mm, that's good, <laughs> I dare you to watch this movie and not piss your freaking pants. If peeing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. OK, it's much better. It's not. This is a master class in the use of jump scares, but they are done in a way where it does not feel cheap. You don't feel like, oh, that's just a cat jumping from the, the hallway. It's all done in a masterful way. And I really liked it. The it's number six and not number one or number two on this list, because with about 15 minutes left, it takes a big veer away from horror and tries to be more poignant. So it, it gives you a more poignant ending that's more like, uh, I don't know, like heartwarming than anything, which kind of cheapens the scare factor. But I don't think you can really deduct from that just because that's how it ended. Most horror movies have terrible endings. So it has a good ending. It's just not as scary. You always have surprising things, a lot of which I've never Never, never heard, heard of this movie. Never yeah. heard of it. I was two seconds away from watching something else, and I saw this for cheaper, and I just said, you know, let me just watch this. Yeah. And I'm like, what Don't is you this? just love when, when you find a movie that you missed? Mm -hmm. I've got one coming well, up. You've never, like, I've never even heard of it. Where is this? Where was, has this been my whole life? But you'll see on, you know, they'll slap some trailer on TV a thousand freaking times for you to watch, and we'll yeah. see that thing. Yeah. Well, but yeah, see that if you've not seen it. People, watch it. It's good. Sounds good. All right. My number five. The Omen, the 1976 version. Very close to being yeah. on my list. Um, first of all, you're talking Richard Donner, you know, who was the director of, of Superman and Lethal Weapon. The Lost you, Boys. Uh, yes. You, mm, I don't think so. He either produced it or directed it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. You got Gregory Peck and Lee Remick, who were Hollywood royalty, who typically back in the 70s don't do horror films. Horror films were considered more subgenre, you know, don't have anything to do with it. So, uh, but what makes it scary? I mean, it, the, uh, the special effects, the visual effects are amazing. The music is legendary. Um, the thing that makes it scary is essentially it depicts what, what I consider to be a real battle between God and Satan, who I believe both exist and, um, and are actively involved in the world. In a lot of ways, this is a Christian film. And most Christian films, I don't know, I think a lot of our viewers probably never would watch a Christian film um, because most of them are pretty, pretty bad. What's amazing to me sometimes is there are people who are absolutely, it's ghosts exist and demons exist, but yet have no belief in God. And that doesn't make any no sense, sense to me. 
It's really, if you believe in one side of that, then you believe in the other. Yeah. If you believe in, in the whole essence of the omen is it that, you know, if, if you think that, that God sent his son into the world to, to uh, repair the broken world and reconnect with, with, with man, um, then Satan doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't want the world to be repaired and he doesn't want people to be reconnected with, with God. It's that whole, it's a flip mirror kind of thing. And that's essentially what this, this film does. It came out in 76, Exorcist came out in 73. And so there was this heightened interest in film goers that sort of in, in things that had to do with the occult or Satan kind of stuff. This did a really good job. It's terrifying to me because I believe in what it's talking about. I believe that it's, it, is, it is real. I don't believe in zombies. I don't believe in werewolves. I don't believe in vampires. But I do believe Satan exists and will do anything he can to, um, to, to, to keep us uh, in bondage. We're now going to this fool over here. Don't believe in werewolves. Pass the plate, <laughs> and uh, yes, take up a collection. Oh, man. No, I don't. I didn't mean to. to I, I just really think that this is this is absolutely terrifying because I just believe that there is truth and reality that well, exists in this. There's a reality to just the whole. It's it's presentation. Um, it almost made my list. I think the reason why it didn't is because I feel like putting it on part three was a slap in its face, kind of. And I didn't want to demean it in any way, but it is, is by far one of the best. There's a new one that just came out. I yes. You, did you I see saw it? it. It was okay. It did better reviews, a lot better reviews than I thought of it. It really kind of ripped a lot of the best parts of this film and just kind of rehashed them. Like, look, 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 watch, you know, that whole scene. Okay. Just because you kill yourself in a different way, you're still basically hanging yourself outside the kid's bath or birthday party type deal. Yeah. So that's why it's not on my list. All right. But my number five. And now I struggle with this. I didn't want to put this on the list just because I think this has become a trendy pick to hate on a little bit because of how successful it was. And it is 2024's Long Legs, uh, directed by, I talked about uh, Zach Kreger as a former comedian turned director. And this is the other one, Doc, director Osgood Perkins. He is 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 going to make some noise with horror films. I really like this movie. Um I You've think, been talking about this for a long time. I think, yeah, I think uh, Mike and Monroe does an amazing job. She's from It Follows. Nicolas Cage is unrecognizable in this. And it's very much the silence of the lambs where he's in it for all of six minutes. But you just have to just sit and watch this movie and try not to ask yourself too many questions. Try not to like, what's happening? What's, you know, did I miss something? Just let, let, let it go through when you're done. It'll all be understandable and it'll all make sense then. And it, it is fantastic. And just the visuals of it, how it's filmed. I think it's filmed in full screen aspect ratio. So it's just different. It feels more nuanced. It feels more, uh, I don't know, like 1990s to me, uh, but very A24, very uh, elevated horror, good stuff. You had me up until Nicolas Cage. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, I mean, just sometimes he, I think he has been brilliant in films. I just feel like sometimes he is, overexposed that every movie that comes out he seems to be in and um but it and i know 10 years ago he couldn't find work yeah, yeah. you know now nah. but you've been talking about that for a, for a, for a long mm -hmm. time and i do have a you know you've turned me on to a lot of things and 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 you've talked i think maybe it's time for me to uh sort of jump on the long legs so yeah, yeah. okay yeah. all right my number 4 um Invisible Man and uh, 2020 Rotten Tomato of 92 directed by Lee Wanell, who boy. is also, which we've talked about in another episode this month, the Wolfman. the Wolfman and not only that, Green Hornet and Kato. And that's my childhood right there. And he did. He wrote and acted in Saw. He wrote and acted in Insidious and a couple of the movies with James Wan. He's like. Right in there with the horror zeitgeist right now, and yeah. I'm all for him. I thought, and I've said this before, like Universal and Hammer, that whole thing, and they're like the grandfather and the father of, of horror, different generations. A lot of younger people don't really have an appreciation of, of Universal because they're slow, they're black and white kind of stuff, they're gothic, and, um, and, and, and this was the first attempt at doing a Universal monster and and it, they did it right. You know, we've tried with, you know, we they're good vampire movies, 
but they're not Dracula. They're mm-hmm. not the universal Dracula or Frankenstein and Wolfman, the mummy, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Um, this was the first time and because it was about something. It wasn't just the, you know, a, 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 a monster, but it was, it had as good horror comments on society it comments on culture and family or whatever and this was a great movie uh i cannot wait for this to uh to happen it was also when you think about it it's easy to be scared of a vampire or a werewolf what's so scary about the invisible man kind of stuff this really was terrifying well that's what it is they put something on its ear what made him scary is he's just a guy well no he's a basically what, what, someone who's a, a someone just steeped in domestic violence and just doesn't give a crap about your well-being. Mm. He wants you back. Yeah. And he's got the wealth to do it. Right. His brother's a lawyer. I mean, they set this thing up yeah. perfectly. It is a terrifying movie. And I'll tell you what, it would have been on my list if I hadn't watched Suicide Club recently, probably. It's <laughs> the movie that got kicked off. But I'm glad because then you put it on. Yeah. Okay. So wham, bam, and a little thank you, man. All right. My number four. Now, I've talked about this movie quite dang enough tonight, so I might as well put it on a darn list. And that's going to be 2022's Barbarian. (laughs) Have you seen this yet? Oh, my. It's amazing. Yes, I've seen it. No, you haven't. I've seen it at least once. (laughs) You're such a liar. Uh, Zach Krager. Oh, Zach Krager. (laughs) Yeah. Starring Georgina Campbell, Bill Skarsgård, and Justin Long. It is psycho for a new generation. Um, it's a great, just a great job of, of doing like the Tarantino thing of weaving stories together to create a big narrative, but it's scary. It's gory. It's over the top. It's gross. Um, it's just, it's everything you want in a horror movie. It's got everything. The end. You obviously love it. And you well, were- it almost was on part two as well. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna have to do it. I've I've seen it. It's popped up before. You can stream it for free. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've seen that, and I I need to do that. You should watch it. You'll like it. Yeah. Or you'll like. It's not a premise that I think you'll have a problem. I've been with. watching a lot of horror movies, and I need I need something to to. And so, if everything on your list is that the one that you would suggest that mm-hmm. I watch? For sure. Okay. I will do yeah. that. I, I yes. Promise. Yes. For sure. And I got one coming up that I want you to, to that reciprocate. or the Night House, just because that one was really good too. Okay. My number three, Evil Dead Two. 1987, Rotten Tomatoes uh, of 88. Little Sam more Raimi, scary, a little less goofy. Well, yes, but it still has the goofy, you know, with Bruce Campbell. He, you know, he really created um, a sort of a, a horror icon, you know, a, a heroic horror icon that uh, was just, just brilliant. I How mean, many of those are there? There's really not a lot. You're right. You're right. Ellen he, Ripley? Yep. Yeah, um, it is, you know, it did have the, it's got the scares to it. It really was the scariest of all three of the films, but it still has the goofy side of it, the the sensibility, uh, Raimi's editing, his close-up shots, the ground shots, you know, as you're moving across. He, I'd never seen that done mm-hmm. done before. Um, the idea of you have something in a cellar that the, it just really was, was real in, in 87, that was um, we've we've sort of lost and we're you know we've become more jaded. But in '87, that was a scary uh, oh was, absolutely a scary movie. Um, I still prefer Army of Darkness, but um, I think as far as a scary movie, this is it's far superior than the than the first one. And I think the humor in it you need. I think there's always a role in humor sometimes in horror films because you can't take the tension too long. It's no. just uh, you've got to need a you need a break, otherwise it's just overwhelming to the viewer. But this is, um, I think, it's still not so old that younger viewers, you know, can still a- appreciate it. I use a scene from it when I talk about uh, Dutch angles when I do blocking with my kids. I, mm-hmm. The scene where he's laughing, and it might be the first one. I'm not sure if it's the first or second one. He's laughing, and then the the wall mask or the uh, hang heads on the wall, the like that moose or whatever, start laughing. And yeah, <laughs> oh, it's a good scene. Yeah, yeah. But it is. It's, it's good. It's very visceral. Um, and I, like you said, you need to balance something funny with the scary stuff or else you don't have anything to compare it against. Yeah. I need to watch it again. I really do. And I need to watch it during October. It should be. You do. Yeah. All right. My number three. 
This one's coming up here for the 31 days of Halloween, and it is 2008's Lake Mungo. Now, this is good because it's, if you hate found footage movies, but you want something that maybe can get you acclimated to it without having to do that for a full hour and a half, this is the movie for you. Isn't that the one that's on movies to watch this coming week? Wasn't it in the episode you just dropped? Uh, not in the episode I just dropped, but it's in, uh, we're going to do it in, uh, probably a couple days from now. It'll okay. Be, it'll be the one. Yep. Sounds um, familiar to me. Yep. Yeah. We, well, I talked about it during then, but it's 95% on IMD or on Rotten Tomatoes. If that tells you something and 6.3 on IMDb, uh, directed Joel Taylor, starring Rosie Trainer and David Pledger. Um, it's about, it's, it's a combination of found footage, interviews and news coverage. Uh, it's about, um, this girl who basically dies and her family dealing with her death, right? But they find cell phone footage of, of her uh, the summer before finding a body that looks just like hers dead in the water. It's this crazy story where you start to find these little things that hint, is she alive? Is she dead? Is something sinister happening? Was she abducted by aliens? Was she killed by a monster? Is she a ghost? Like it's all these different things, but there are some of genuinely... If you're paying attention, I say this always with horror movies. If you're not paying attention to a horror movie, it's never going to be scary to you. But if you pay attention to this film truly, I'm telling you, it will terrify the absolute crap out of you. Which is why I think movies, some horror movies are better in the theater than they are in uh, mm -hmm. on screaming at home. You can pause it and go to the bathroom, pause it and go get, you know, whatever. You're less likely to do that in a yep. in a in a theater. And just the having this the scope of the it's the, loud, it's bigger. Yeah. Uh, but this is, I'm telling you, it's it will get under your skin if you pay attention to it. And it's it's a good, it's a perfect, it's the the reason why found footage movies exist is because of stuff like this. Cool. And you're a huge fan of found footage. I'm less enamored with it sometimes. I find myself getting pulled out of it, trying yes. to figure out, wait a minute, this looks like it was edited. Mm -hmm. When did they edit this? When did found? they edit this? Yes. yes. This doesn't yeah. have to worry about any of that because it's all like, oh, this is all... And in, we're all investigating this, so of course we're going to find this stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Good. And well, it's from 2008, too, so it's different. We don't have the same social media and stuff that we have now, so it's a little different. Grainier right. footage, good stuff, though. And so of all the seven movies you have, which is the one that you would tell me to watch? Long Legs? Barbarian. Barbarian? The Night House. Okay. All right. My number two is what I want you to watch, which is I watched... Um, Barbie uh, Girl. Friday. Um, Ravenous. Okay. 19 or 2017. I uh, may have seen it. I just have to, I can't say for Rotten sure. Tomatoes, 88. Audience score of 58%. And I don't get it. That means I'm going to love it because that means it's elevated horror. Well, I think the reason why maybe the audience doesn't like it is, well, huh? Oui, oui, France. It's French and it's got subtitles and you have to pay attention to the subtitles. You can't look away because it really does help you see the images on the screen, but the but the, the 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 dialogue sort of helps you understand exactly what's going on. It's a slow burn. The acting is amazing. Um the 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 great makeup, it's it's gory. Um it is a zombie film essentially and it is about a group of survivors and they sort of are going out hunting uh, zombies. But the zombies have more, you know, in in City of the Dead um, where the zombies sort of had... Like, you mean Land of the Dead? Land, Land of the you Dead. You said City of the Dead, but I know what you're talking about. Yes. The one with the city in it. It's, it's where they sort of find their own sort of social network. Yes. And you get the, um, that in this as, as well. And it's almost like the zombies have a religion. The Fonz be with you. And also with you. Let us A. A. Because they keep... You'll find stacks of furniture or everyday items that are just sort of built in these towers that looks to be at like two story building height. And the zombies will just sort of be standing there around it, just staring at it, not saying anything. And I still don't quite understand what all of that means. And so it's like, well, who do you, who are you cheering for in this? Are you cheering for the infected? Or are you cheering for the folks that are out there trying to, 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 to kill them? Mm -hmm. And who do you trust? And it's, you know, there's a, one of the characters has a bandage on her hand and says it was a, it was a dog bite. It was, it was a, a dog. dog bite. But 
do you know that was really the case or, mm. or not? Um, and but it was just very surprising. And I like movies that are different. And you know how many zombie movies have we seen? This was unique. I, and I said to myself, where was this at? Where's this been all my life? <laughs> because it really is one of the best movies I've seen this year. Yeah, I thought when you mentioned it to me, I thought you were talking about a, the movie from the 90s with what's his face in it. No. No, yeah, I need to watch that one. It no, sounds good. I like just the interesting thing about the religion in there. That aspect makes me want to watch it all the more. It reminds me a little bit of Midsummer kind of kind of deal. A lot of visually, it's stunning. Um, the sound design, I, I just it's good stuff. Ravenous. Yes, ravenous. I'll put it on my list. Yeah. I'll have to watch it. And where'd you watch it on? I streamed it on Netflix. I don't have Netflix. <laughs> That's the one I don't have. Oh. Sorry. Okay. I'll find a way. We'll figure it out. But my number two, and I'm glad I put this one on here. I feel very excited about this one. This is one that should does not get the love it should, and it should get more love, and it is 1990s Jacob's Ladder. Uh, wow. What? No. You don't like it? Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. That means he hates it. Uh, directed by Adrian Lyne, starring my man Tim Robbins. Elizabeth Pena and Danny Aiello. It is a slow burn about a Vietnam vet who's just descent into madness. And the uh, hospital scene in that movie is one of the top 10 scariest movie scenes of all time. The end. It's such a good movie. And it's dated now to the way to, to the point that it actually gives it a little bit of an extra feel, I think. The script for that film was one of the most sought after anticipated everybody wanted to 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 do that i mm -hmm. mean it was they it was like citizen kane and i believe if i'm not mistaken there's even a documentary made about what happened like how did it did it fall apart because it was not particularly well mm -hmm. uh well loved or respected at, at the i saw it um, I don't, I didn't think see it. It's not in the theater. I think I saw it. It must've been VHS back, back, back then. And, um, and then just, but it's like, I think people consider it a disappointment because the, it should have been on the script, on the page. It was supposed to have been really something. And well, they tried to remake it and it's the remake's terrible. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe it's just not. I need to go back and look at it with new eyes, you know, with 68 year old eyes uh, kind of thing, because I do remember it's very creepy mm -hmm. and it reminds me a little bit of uh, Kingdom um, Hospital, which sure. is a Dutch film. I think I've told You've you about, about before it, yeah. um, it, it uh, just the visuals of it. There's some things it's just like, wow. You know, it's like a dream quality. Mm -hmm. yeah, like very a much, nightmare. very much. Yeah. It's a nightmare. It's on the hinges on the. Um, performances by Tim Robbins and Elizabeth Pena. It's all it's all about their relationship and them acting together and they do a great job. Yeah. Tim Robbins doesn't get the love that he needs. He deserves. Yeah. I need to go back and, and revisit one. that and give it another try. And I'm probably if on they're probably even like making of special features or something. I don't know or certainly reading, you know, going to wiki and what happened with yeah. it. Yeah. I didn't know about any of that. So No. No, they were they thought that this people were it was a bidding war of who who was going oh, to be able to get, get that yeah, yeah. What company. Yeah. All right. Um, my number one, which you might be surprised, is um, 2008's Orphanage. No. Um, that one considered. That considered. Rotten Tomatoes, 80, 87. Um, it, J. Uh, uh, Bayana, which did Lord of the Rings, uh, Rings of Power, did Jurassic uh, uh, Fallen Kingdom. Uh, Guillermo del Toro was uh, helped produce it in it. Clearly, it shows. It's very, very creepy. Uh, set design is amazing. Essentially, a woman grows up in an orphanage, and then as an adult, convinces her husband that they're going to buy it, and they're going to turn it into like a, uh, it's not a bed and breakfast. I think it's more of like a place that they wanted to, to turn into a place that they could help people. Good boarding and they do it, and things, strange things. Her son uh, disappears, and it's just sort of this unfolds. The... The visuals on this, you know, sometimes there's monsters that when you see them, they're truly terrifying. And there's something terrifying about the 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 little tiny ghostlet thing with the little mask that they wear. Mm -hmm. If I saw that thing, pooping your pants. it really would. You'd be <laughs> pooping your rompers. It uh, so, but it's very very creepy. It's a foreign film again, 
um, very highly, uh, highly uh, uh, thought of. It's, I, in fact, when I, I thought, oh, that's Del Toro directed that. No, he didn't. But you feel his fingerprints are, are just all over it. Last thing I'm going to say about it is Geraldine uh, Chaplin is in it and did a great job and, and has got a lot of attention for it. Geraldine Chaplin is the daughter of Charlie Chaplin. Huh. And um, she is, yeah, she's really, you know, she looks a lot like him. Yeah. I didn't know that. Except for the mustache. Hmm. Not bad. Yeah. That's a good movie, too. I like that one. That one, I considered it. Very much considered that one. Very yeah. creepy film. All right. So my number one. Now, you may have put this one on one of your lists. I'm almost certain you did. But I had to put it here because it deserves to be here. And that would be 1980s The Shining. Hmm. The fact that I haven't put it on here, yes, is a slap to my main man Kubrick's face. Because there's probably not a movie that's scarier for longer stretches of time. Like the amount of time spent scared in The Shining is probably greater than that of any other movie. And yes, it's almost three hours long, so you got a lot to pull from. But it is just so damn unnerving. And it's 100% to do with the acting pulled from or that, that Coppola, or not Coppola, that Kubrick got out of those three actors. And that's, it hinges on that whatsoever, 100%. Red rum, red rum. Red rum. Terrifying. Terrifying. Get now, out of here. When you say three, are you talking about Scatman Carruthers? Well, not and- Scatman Carruthers. <laughs> He's good too. He's just weird. No, but Danny Lloyd, Shelley Duvall, and Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I have mixed feelings about the film. I have grown to really love it and appreciate it. I didn't like it when it first came out. It's kind of in the same way I didn't like Bram Stoker's Dracula when it first came out. I saw The Shining back in the, um, would have been 1980, 81, can't remember. Do you have the date? The year that it came out? 1980. Um, I saw it in California. I saw it in Hollywood where I lived in. Hollywood. And, um, I remember being overwhelmed. Um, it should be seen. If you've never seen it on the big screen, which I don't know that you have, it is a totally different pe- uh, movie. And I'm assuming, yeah. it is the sound yes. especially yes. Is, is is different. When, when Danny is riding his um, tricycle over the carpet and then not the carpet, it just, you feel it in your, in your mm-hmm. gut. The two little girls at the end of the hallway Hello, that fast, Danny. yes. It really, the visuals on on it um, are just amazing. There are some things I just didn't quite get um, <laughs> yeah. in it. You know, it's like, There's some weird stuff. Yeah, in but it, I've grown to really, really appreciate um, the, um, the, the film. I, I know that it's taken some hits because it's, it departs a little bit from Stephen King's, the, from the novel. Mm-hmm. But as a film, I think it stands on its own, and I agree that it should be uh, in, in any list of top 10 20 horror films i agree yeah i've read before that and stephen king has said that that the problem with the film is that kubrick doesn't believe in the supernatural and it sort of shows in in his in his direction Hmm. and um and so that is interesting yeah but but no i i'm 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 there for it so barbarians that's the one barbarians and the night house and I'm gonna gonna say, run to Ravenous. It feels like you're running at an incredible rate, Harry. Quit it. We're not even through Connecticut yet, and already you're annoying me. Sorry. It it's just really, um, I would say we probably should do an episode with the top, uh, the top seven zombie films because there is there's hundreds and there. hundreds of those. And, and there's uh, also those the things that are kind of adjacent to it that still work under the uh, the idea of zombie. Yep. yep. Yeah, but it's it's uh, it's good. So, um, what do you think? This is our third pass at, at this, and we probably, like he said earlier, we could probably do an, another one next Halloween. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, take a, a a gander at all the stuff that we have, and and communally, we're all sort of watching a horror movie every day, and so take a look at those those drop every week and, and or every day, mm-hmm. um, and it's new stuff, old stuff. Uh, try to make a good mix of everything it is and it appeals to all generations Mm -hmm. kind of stuff so we appreciate uh this month especially our viewership sort of perks up and uh, like us subscribe do all of those kind of things tell your mother tell your dad and uh, we'll see you at the movies kill me